Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 most fun and creatively designed killers to play as in Dead by Daylight. You're mine. Number 20, Vecna, aka the Lich. What secrets does this realm hold? The big bad of Dungeons and Dragons comes with a weapon wheel loaded up with some handy spells that allow him to maintain control of a chase and even find survivors. Well, to some degree at least. The Dispelling Sphere will give an idea of where survivors are while temporarily neutralizing whatever magical items they may be wielding. Mage Hand is a great way to deny survivors of a pallet drop or even Vault 1 if you throw them off guard. Fly can also help Vecna maintain a decent patrol across large distances while potentially giving him some value in distance-based perks like Make Your Choice. As for his fourth spell, Flight of the Damned, it's way too slow to start up and easy for survivors to dodge, which is what gets him slapped onto the bottom of this list. <sighs> that is not Number 19, The Oni. Kazan Yamaoka imposes an intimidating presence on those who haven't gone against him enough times. The thing about the Oni is that he greatly benefits from keeping survivors injured as they can drop blood orbs that can eventually activate his unique killer power, Yamaoka's Wrath. When activated, the Oni can temporarily utilize two new abilities to quickly hunt and down survivors. Demon Dash will help him traverse long distances and possibly ambush unsuspecting survivors, while a charged Demon Strike will down even healthy survivors in a single hit. Only problem is that both of the Oni's abilities can be a little tricky to utilize. How many times have we gotten stuck on a small rock or an awkwardly placed pile of garbage? Too many times to count, and it can quickly hinder any Oni player. Number 18, The Nurse. When trying to escape the nurse, survivors may have an incredibly hard time avoiding her attacks. The nurse can blink across short distances, making her movement seem unpredictable. Your only means of defense is to try and play mind games with her and make her blink in the wrong direction. Well, for a killer that sounds this oppressive, why is she only at number 18? Whereas PC players might get a grasp on the nurse quickly, the same cannot be said for console players or those who prefer using a controller over mouse and keyboard. When used by that half of the player base, the nurse can feel a tad awkward and clunky to control, and her slow movement speed does not help. Fun killer, but man, she requires a ton of patience to get a hang of. Number 17, Pyramid Head a.k.a. The Executioner. We'll admit that at the time of this video, most of Pyramid Head's add-ons are pretty useless. Even so, his power gives him some level of control and surveillance of the map. Pyramid Head can leave behind trails that inflict torment on any survivors who carelessly pass through them unless they're crouch walking. Should a survivor go down while inflicted with torment, Pyramid Head gets the opportunity to send them to the Cage of Atonement, which is basically an instant hook at the expense of not knowing where the survivor is imprisoned. Now, if said survivor is at Death Hook and is inflicted with torment, well, they could be subjected to a quick and unceremonious exit. Yeah, Pyramid Head does have the potential to end games fast, but that's if everyone is playing too recklessly and if the player is placing trails in good spots. Here's hoping those add-ons soon buff him just a 
tad more. Number 16, Leatherface, aka the Cannibal. The second you see a Bubba in your game, you know this is going to go one of two ways. Either you're about to be in one of the longest chases you've ever been in, or you're about to have one of the shortest games you've ever played. Old Leatherface can use his trusty chainsaw to down survivors regardless of what health state they're in. This has led many Bubba players to come up with utterly oppressive builds like Basement Bubba that can potentially end games before half of the gens are finished. However, missing a chainsaw sweep could cost you time in a chase or straight up lose a survivor if you wind up in a tantrum. And trust us, that collision can be unforgiving sometimes. Number 15, The Unknown. The Unknown is a parasitic being that can leave behind husks and teleport to them to catch survivors off guard. The only way survivors are able to limit its mobility is by carefully approaching these husks and interacting with them. This can leave them vulnerable for quite some time while allowing the Unknown to land free hits. There is another attack the Unknown has access to, the UVX projectile. Though it can potentially damage survivors already inflicted by its weakness effect, landing these shots can be somewhat cumbersome as the projectile always bounces off the first surface it makes contact with. Yeah, you can make some incredible plays with it, but in some situations, its collision detection can make it a bit frustrating to use. Still, it does make the unknown an extremely versatile killer. Number 14. Albert Wesker, aka the Mastermind. Poor performance indeed. It is important to note that Wesker is a killer with a bit of a learning curve. Though he can grab and either slam or toss survivors like mere toys, controlling his dash attack requires a mix of precision and unpredictability. Your victims will try to juke you into going a completely different path, which might be frustrating. However, Wesker comes with plenty of benefits in his toolkit. <laughs> Of all the killers in the game, he moves the fastest and has a rather sizable terror radius, which can create plenty of opportunities for you to get the jump on survivors. And once you start landing those dash attacks, you can become a truly oppressive force. It also helps when you tack on perks that further increase Wesker's terror radius and affect skill checks, all of which will keep your opponents guessing where you might be on the map. <laughs> Let's finish this. Number 13. The Pig. Poor Amanda can be an easy killer to bully when Swifts use certain builds, but in a normal game she can be just as dirty. The Pig can crouch and become undetectable on the fly, which can make her tough to spot in grassy or plant-filled realms like Backwater Swamp or Grave of Glenvale. But what really can hamper survivors from finishing gens and possibly escaping are the reverse bear traps. <laughs> The pig can place these on the heads of downed survivors, and when a gen is completed, the trap's timer activates. Should a survivor fail to find the right key in one of the jigsaw boxes spawned around the map, well, suddenly it's not so fun wearing a hat the whole game now, is it? Number 12, The Hillbilly. Since we did our original list way back in 2021, the hillbilly has seen a pretty substantial change in how he plays. While he still has access to his chainsaw sprint to rush towards unsuspecting survivors, his reworked overdrive mechanic now gives him some benefits to overusing the chainsaw. <laughs> As
At the expense of a slight increase to charging up for a sprint, the Hillbilly gets a reduced cooldown on sprints and an increase in movement speed during a sprint. Basically, you'll find some ways to down a survivor from halfway across the map. Just keep in mind any potential small tiles getting in your way because the gods of collision can be ruthless. <laughs> Number 11, Dracula, AKA the Dark Lord. Castlevania has finally made its way into Dead by Daylight, and Dracula has quickly cemented himself as one of the most fun killers to play in the game. With his Pillars of Hellfire, he can injure or down survivors from across small tiles, or even cause pillars to spawn around him or the exit gate, depending on what add-ons are being used, of course. But his most important powers are his shape-shifting abilities. As a swarm of bats, Dracula can teleport to various windows and dropped pallets to possibly flank survivors. As for his wolf form, he can find survivors more easily as scratch marks form closer together and in a more linear fashion. Honestly, you'll feel just as unstoppable as he was back in the NES days. Your existence is but a fleeting flame. <laughs> Number 10. The Nemesis. Although Wesker's dash attacks can be tough but satisfying to land, Nemesis brings a whole other sinister game to Dead by Daylight. Nemi can power up his tentacle strikes by hitting survivors with them, eventually letting him break pallets and extend his reach. However, the most satisfying aspect of his kit are the zombies. <laughs> Shortly after the match begins, two zombies will spawn in and begin wandering around looking for survivors. In some circumstances, this can potentially let you force players between a rock and a hard place, making them choose between taking a hit from you, the zombie, or risking a hit from both of you simultaneously and getting downed instantly. The zombies can lead to some hilarious moments and chases, and it's why Nemesis is our preferred killer between the two Resident Evil reps. Number 9. The Dredge Lockers were once an almost guaranteed safe haven to keep killers from finding you, but if you notice lockers having locks on them, congratulations! You have found yourself in a game with the Dredge. This blob of flesh and darkness uses lockers to teleport to various areas of the map, and if he teleports to a locker you're hiding in, you'll be instantly grabbed and ready to be hooked. What makes him more troublesome is the nightfall mechanic. Every time the dredge teleports or injures or hooks survivors, Nightfall gets closer to activation. Once it reaches full charge, survivors are suddenly shrouded in almost complete darkness while being much more visually prominent in the dredge's vision. Mobility and temporary periods of explicit info are what make the dredge a real monster in this game. Number 8, The Plague. Leaning a bit more towards body horror in this corner of DBD, The Plague is one of the most difficult killers to go up against. The big reason for this is her unique power, Vile Purge. By vomiting onto survivors, and doing so extensively and excessively, The Plague can force players into an injured state while inflicting broken, preventing them from healing and forcing them to seek out one of her pools of devotion. Should a survivor ignore infection and proceed to interact with gens, pallets, and teammates, the infection can wind up infecting fellow survivors. This is where survivors must choose between staying infected and injured for a majority of the game or curing themselves. If a survivor cures themselves at a pool of devotion, the plague can go to the pool, ingest the corruption, and turn her vile purge into a projectile that directly injures players just as a regular hit would. The second you hear those mystical chants, run. <laughs> Number 7, The Ghost Face. Ah! 
Sometimes you may stumble upon a ghost face that just wants to be goofy and have fun with survivors. The serious ghost face players, they're a different beast altogether. Ghostface is all about hiding from survivors and stalking them until they are fully marked. Upon fully marking a survivor, that player is oblivious to Ghostface's whereabouts and is able to be downed in a single strike. In some instances, expert Ghostface players can mark survivors while chasing them but that requires some finesse and looping around a strong tile, all while hoping another survivor doesn't out you. Overall, Ghostface is one of those killers you can get a grasp on quickly, but will demand some time to truly master and get the jump on survivors. Number six, The Huntress. If you watch any DVD streamers or YouTubers, you may have come across the occasional Huntress compilation where players are nailing hatchet throws from ridiculously long distances. That's pretty much why we regard the Huntress so highly when looking at the most fun killers. Landing hits with a hatchet lob can be satisfying in short distance chases, even when the chase boils down to playing mind games around a tile. But on the off chance that you try to lob a hatchet from halfway across the map and suddenly hear it hit? Holy crap, you will wind up laughing your way to the gen. And the hook. Fun for you, not so much for the survivors. Not with that wonky collision detection, of course. Number five, the doctor. <laughs> Are you hearing blomps, zaps, a whole lot of screaming? Yep, you're trapped in a game with the Doctor. Thanks to the powers of his overcooked mind, the Doctor is capable of harnessing concentrated electricity in a small area in front of him. Briefly frying survivors will cause them to scream and temporarily prevent them from vaulting windows and dropping pallets. Add-ons can make his zaps even more distressing, as they may cause survivors to start hearing the Doc's terror radius music, see visions of him, or even be cast in the light of his red stain. Depending on their madness level, players may even see bizarre skill checks that can further hinder their progress in healing or repairing gens. And hey, slap a bunch of perks on Doctor that cause survivors to scream even more, and you'll have a real party happening. Number four, Michael Myers, AKA The Shape. In all honesty, Michael Myers can be one of the hardest killers to play as. This is because his power, Evil Within, requires you to stalk survivors in order to efficiently down and sacrifice them. This means you may lose out on two or three gens before you can make it to maximum Evil Within. Achieve this, and Michael can down survivors instantly for a certain period of time. Certain add-ons can even let him grab a survivor while their back is turned towards him and kill them instantly. But that alone is what makes Michael fun to play with. It's Halloween all over again, and this time, we get to become pure evil. <laughs> Number three, the Xenomorph. If you want to play a killer that is truly devious, then the Xenomorph is one of the best to play as. Through the use of crawl spaces and a tunnel system, the Xenomorph can cover a lot of ground and even detect survivors' footsteps when they're running on the surface. Not only that, but you'll also be notified of a survivor's presence if they're close enough to the tunnel you're exiting from. But what truly makes the Xenomorph one of DBD's most satisfying killers to play with is its long-ranged tail attack. With its tail, the Xenomorph can injure survivors from the other side of some tiles or objects, and even pallets. So long as you watch out for the flamethrower turrets that can hinder your speed, no survivor will ever escape your fury. Number two, Chucky, AKA the good guy. Yeah! That's 
what you get when you play with dolls. <laughs> Chucky used to be one of DBD's most oppressive killers until Behavior nerfed him and reworked his power a bit. While in Heidi Ho mode, Chucky becomes undetectable as survivors hear footsteps from various directions. Heidi Ho mode also grants you access to a dash attack that can be tough to land, but nail the hit and you may gain the upper hand in the chase early on. Of course, the best part of Chucky isn't the sneaky sucker stabs or the general creative approach and how behavior managed to make him playable in the first place. No, it's the simple fact that Chucky will verbally assault survivors relentlessly. You're mine, shit for brains. Start a chase, land a hit, down a survivor, hook them, off them. Chucky has an insult for everything, and it makes every game hilarious. Oh, got something for you, pisshead. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure to go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, the spirit. In our original list of the best killers to play as, we put the spirit at number one. Unsurprisingly, Rin Yamaoka still sits at our top spot and it's for the very same reasons we stated in that list. The spirit leans heavily into DBD's horror side in terms of gameplay thanks to her unique power. Using Yamaoka's haunting lets her turn invisible and jump scare unsuspecting survivors. On top of that, she moves at such a quick speed that by the time you hear her sounds, she's already behind you. The spirit is by far the scariest and toughest killer to go against, and it is what makes her the most fun to go against and play as. Very rarely do killers integrate an element of true horror into their mechanics, and spirit shows that approach and creativity beautifully. Which killer do you like to play the most? Survivors, who would you say is the killer you struggle with the most? For me, I like to play as Nemesis a lot, and the killer I struggle against most of the time is Wraith. I can't stand Wraith. But let us know down in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe to Watch Mojo. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.